It's a platformer. It is a music sequencer. It is a dessert topping. The designers behind Sound Shapes are here to explain it all to us. All of it. This episode of New Challenger is brought to you by Audible.com. Welcome to the show. I'm Anthony, and I have been going nuts over Sound Shapes for the last couple days. It's a platformer, but it's also a music sequencer with community levels and dead mouses there, and it's nuts. It's almost too nuts for me to explain, but luckily, Jonathan Mack and Shahan Liam, the designers of the game, have joined me via future video telephone to tell me all about it. Hello, guys. Hey. Hey. You look really excited to be here, John. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's how I look when I'm excited. So, Sound Shapes is, is a platformer with kind of a musical twist to it, and we've, we've seen games where gameplay kind of affects the sound and the score of the game before. How is Sound Shapes different? Uh, well, I guess a lot of the games, like with Rez and Everyday True and Luminous, they're like, it's sort of like background music with musical sound effects. So like in Sound Shapes, the innovation is that you actually write your own music. Where did the idea for, for doing this come from? How did you decide that you wanted to make a game that was also a sequencer? Well, well we started like, we, that wasn't our intention actually. Um, we started writing like music visualizers, um, not really games in general. And then somehow we got on this whole game thing and we, we worked on like a lot of games that were, um, that we never released that were sort of like music with musical sound effects. Um, and we got pretty far with that, but I don't know, I remember we got to a point where it's just like, uh, the player doesn't have a way to write their own music, really. They don't have this ownership over um, what they're doing. And so, I don't know. I remember we were looking at like a piano roll or something, like in Fruity Loops or whatever, and thinking, hey, what if you could just jump on those things? Kind of like the Tom Hanks scene in Big. <laughs> <laughs> but a video I game. Um, so when you when you were creating this, and once you decide that you're going to make a game where people can also make their own music, I mean, not everybody is a musician, and not everybody is a level designer. How do you kind of make tools that are accessible enough for somebody like me, who's you know borderline tone deaf and has never made a game before, where? the level that I make actually turns out to sound beautiful and is kind of able to be played as a game and be interesting. You know, there's a lot of things, musical housekeeping kind of things that like musical theory things that are happening behind the scenes that, um, you know, someone who's a musician would sort of be following certain rules and, and those rules are actually built into the logic of the game and how the different entities work because, because we were, because all that logic is built into the, into the game, you can sort of just basically play around and usually it sounds reasonable. I mean, I think it's still possible to make it sound like a train wreck. And I think if, if that wasn't the case, then it wouldn't, it wouldn't be as meaningful of, a, of an experience when you actually make something that sounds good, right? But I think that what we tried to do is make it so that within a reasonable amount of time, you can come up with something that you're happy with and that'll encourage you to um, try and make the next thing and you'll, you know, as you play more of other people's levels or as you're looking at stuff in the campaign, you're getting more ideas and getting more, uh, getting better at, at the, that side of it. So obviously to, to get people excited about making their own levels, you have to give them a game to start with and you guys, uh, chose some really interesting artists and musicians to work with to kind of show off the range of the game. You've got, uh, you've got the guys from Super Brothers in there, and Jim Guthrie, who, who made Sword and Sorcery. You've got Dead Mouse. you've got Beck in there. How do, you, how do you collect these people and get them involved with your game? Well, okay, so the whole idea was to sort of create, yeah, you know, like the game is uh, separated into different uh, record. So the idea is like each record should be different, and, and, and so the idea was to find um, artists that have different styles um, that are sort of underrepresented, I guess. Um, 
Like real, like kind of indie underground dudes like Beck and Dead Mouse who don't really have a following yet. Oh, oh hold on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, visuals, visuals. Okay, okay. So, um, I don't know. I, I, I wanted to do uh, Super Brothers for sure, just because this style. I mean, I think this was was this before Sorcery? Yeah, I can't remember. Might have been after. Yeah, it was after, I guess. But um, his style is just like I don't know. It's just beautiful pixels, and it was really interesting to sort of, uh, I guess, juxtapose that with um, the Pixel Jam pixels, which are which are sort of like a completely different school of thought, um, and that really worked out with the theme of that record to being like throwback to Atari classics. Um, but yeah, the idea was just to find like a lot of sort of different styles, like Colin stuff, the stuff we do in houses, sort of realistic, and then we have. Um, I mean, finding the Becker is just pretty hard, actually. It's just like, Beck gave us three different songs. Oh, wow. <laughs> just trying to find someone to, um, who can sort of encompass all those ideas. Um, luckily, we found someone just down the street from us. More with the guys in just a moment, but first, do you know it's kind of like sound shapes, audiobooks, because they are a magical adventure for your ears. Audible.com is the leading provider of downloadable digital audiobooks and spoken word entertainment. Audible has over 100,000 titles to choose from. You can play them back on your iPod, MP3 player, whatever, anywhere, anytime. Choose from books in every genre. They got science fiction, thrillers, drama, history, business, comedy, all of the genres. They, that was not all of them. They have more. They have so many more. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash challenger to get a free audiobook download of your choice when you sign up today. Again, that is audiblepodcast.com slash challenger for your free audiobook. So this is interesting because you have all these, all these artists giving you songs and art, uh, but they're not, I mean, they're not just like giving you a song, right? They're just giving you like a range of sound effects and they all kind of have to work with all of the other musicians' sound effects because players and the editor can mix and match everything, right? That, I mean, I, I guess that goes back to a lot of what we were saying before, you know, like there's, so for example, the sequencer has um, like a pitch shifting and time stretching library built into it. So any any loop that you choose from say a dead mouse song, you know, the, the sequencer knows, you know, this, the uh, musical key and the tempo of that, of that piece of music. And then if you try and put uh, you know, a Jim Guthrie loop on top, it'll automatically make them match so that, um, you know, musically that's going to make sense and, and also tempo-wise, obviously. So basically there's, you know, from the music point of view, there's there's stuff, there's technology that's sort of happening behind the scenes that um, allows, allows that stuff to get layered and, and mashed up together. Did you ever get a, did you get a song or, or have to give a note to an artist? along the way where it was just like, dude, this song is not gonna mix with anybody else's stuff. Every single one has value. <laughs> it's, it's, Beautiful. <laughs> Beautifully handled. <laughs> uh, so we've we've got all these all these artists now, you know, we've got the Pixel Jam and Dead Mouse, we've got we've got Beck, we've got, you know, uh, Jim Guthrie and Super Brothers. Are we going to see are you guys planning on updating with new albums and, and kind of new art and music libraries for people to use? Okay, so this is what we're instructed to say. And there's some exciting stuff coming down the. Basically, we can't talk about it, but um, obviously we plan. On it. What if I told you that we'll put a we'll put a firewall on so nobody from Sony can see the video? <laughs> oh, you give okay. me a, would you give me a different answer then? No. <laughs> uh, so, uh, talking, you know, in, in terms of level creation and editing, obviously community involvement is going to be a huge part of this. Is there is there a fear? That you're just gonna check in and nobody's making levels, and if that's true, what do you what do you do? Uh, there, they, we do have that fear. Yeah. Um, in terms of what do we do, I guess like get a time machine and go back to five years just ago get, and get a job and not yeah, <laughs> get jobs <laughs> and get jobs instead of doing make a resume. Yeah. <laughs> are you uh, are you guys doing a lot of stuff on the community end in, in terms of like uh, I, I know you have kind of a little big planet esque. Uh, browser where people can kind of find levels from their favorite authors and from their friends. Are you guys doing anything in terms of reaching out to level creators or, or doing your own features and things like that to kind of keep the community going and, and jump-starting it? Yeah, I think uh, all that stuff is 
is we're learning at the same time that the community is sort of establishing itself. So all that stuff is stuff that we're thinking about and we're, we're keeping a close eye. Like everyone in here in the studio is super excited and checking out all the levels that are getting made. And we're, and I think that, you know, it's something that we're going to grow and evolve, evolve with um, at the same time that the community is. Yeah, I think our main thing was just like, it, the game's been out for two days, so we, don't, we didn't even know. I think we thought that there weren't going to be levels made until like, next week, because people would need to get used to using the editor and stuff, but instead, the people decided to upload a thousand levels, so that's like, that's kind of a shot to us. That's so, awesome. And, and I guess one of the things that makes it super easy to jump in with the level editor and become part of the community is you guys uh, went on PS3 and Vita, one purchase, Super simple. Number one, thank you, because nobody is doing that right now, and it's driving me crazy. And uh, what made you guys decide to do that? What was the impetus behind doing both at once? I think I think someone said that in a meeting, and we all just said, "Yep, let's do that." <laughs> it just I don't know. It feels right? like it feels like such a no-brainer, and nobody's doing it. Yeah, so it wasn't it wasn't like a discussion or anything. It just. Sort of someone said it and said okay. So yes, go get Sound Shapes right now. $14.99 gets it for your PS3 and your Vita. It's $11.99 if you are a PlayStation Plus member. Thanks so much to the guys for showing off the game here in the studio. You guys are the best. And I'm looking forward to see what people do with your game. Uh, next week, back in the studio, we're gonna have the lead designer of Mark of the Ninja. That's that 2D stealth ninja action thing that's coming for XBLA. So be sure that you have subscribed so you do not miss that. And also, if you like this video, there's a little button right down below where you can tell me exactly that, that you liked it. So hit that, and we'll see you next Thursday.